So I'm going to test your knowledge now, now we've covered some loops, and we're going to draw a cube. What does that mean? Well, for example, if the user enters the number 5, and we press enter, it draws a cube. You can see there's 5 asterisks across, and 5 down. If the user enters 6, then it will be 6 across, and 6 down. How do we accomplish that? So let's take a look at the code here. Now, it's not doing much right now. We're asking the user to enter a number, and then we're storing their answer into a variable called num. So we're not doing anything. So how do we approach this problem? How do we draw these cubes? Well, we need a mechanism to keep drawing asterisks on the screen until we kind of reach the user's number. So when something keeps doing something, we kind of think loop in our head. We need something to keep doing something. We need something to keep looping. So in our head, we should think, OK, we need a loop here. I'm not sure how many loops or what kind of loop, but I know I need a loop. So that's a good start. Now, when I talked about for loops versus while loops, I said a for loop is kind of good when you know how many iterations it's going to do. You can use a while loop, but I'm just saying a for loop would be better in this case. And we do know how many iterations because we have the number that the user entered, which will be the size of the cube. So a for loop would be a good start to kind of approach this problem. So let's start creating a for loop using the for keyword here. Now the format of the for loop, it takes three things. So we need to initialize a variable. I'm going to call it y. I'm going to initialize it to zero. Uh, now we need our condition. So I want it to keep looping until it's less than whatever the user entered. And then I just want to increment it by one each time. So now I want to output an asterisk on the screen. So let's delete that and put an asterisk in. And let's kind of run our program and see what we have so far. So let's enter the number 5. And you can see we kind of have the asterisks going down. We have 5 asterisks. They're all kind of going vertically. So we have it sort of halfway there right now. But what we need to do is get the asterisks going across as well. So every time this for loop iterates, it's drawing an asterisk and going to the next line, drawing an asterisk going to the next line. So every iteration, we kind of need something to kind of put asterisks going this way as well, every time the loop iterates. So how do we get something to keep doing something? Well, that's a loop. So what we could do is put a loop inside a loop. So let's take a look at that. So now we can't have the same variable name twice. You can see y is used by this loop. So we're going to need to kind of rename this one. Let's call this one x. For no real reason. It can be whatever. It can be cheeseburger if you really want it to. <laughs> so now we have two loops. We have what's called a nested loop. A loop inside a loop. So every time this loop iterates, it's doing all of this. So consider that. So let's kind of run the program now and see what we're dealing with. I enter the number 5. And now, wow, what is happening? Now we have 25 stars going down. That's a bit wrong, isn't it? <laughs> Why is it doing that? That's because every time this loop is run, it runs this loop. And every time this loop, loop runs, we're actually writing a, a, the asterisks here, but also a new line. And now that's a problem for us. We don't want to write a new line every time this runs. Otherwise, we're just going to get vertical kind of asterisks. So what we can do, we can introduce a new method called write. And what that does, it writes everything in this string here, all of this stuff here. But it doesn't put a new line afterwards. It keeps it on the same line. So that's the difference between write line, which writes this, and then puts a new line. However, write just writes this, and it doesn't put a new line. So let's take a look at this now. Let's enter number 5. And now you can see, oh, well, all the asterisks are kind of going across the x-axis now. They're all going across. <laughs> what is going on here? Well, that's because we're not actually writing any lines at all now. It's just pretty much writing, you know, one way. So I need to start putting those new lines in. So right now we have 25 asterisks going across. 
and I want a new line every five of these. Now we know if the user enters the number five here, this inner loop will iterate five times. So once it's done its fifth one, the code will kind of finish this loop and continue running the rest of the code until the first loop starts all over again. So right here, I need to enter a new line. How do I enter a new line? There's lots of ways, but using the knowledge we already know, we can just do that. So we're writing nothing, but then it adds that line afterwards. So let's run this now. Let's enter the number six, just so we prove it's not a fluke. It's actually going to grow a bigger cube for a different number. So now we have one, two, three, four, five, six across, one, two, three, four, five, six down. So we've pretty much done it. So let's just go over this code real quick. We take the user's number, and now we have a nested loop. So the first time this loop iterates, it runs this code here, which is also another loop. So now it goes inside here and outputs an asterisk to the screen. For example, if the user enters the number five, and let's replace that so it's more readable. It's going to run this five times. So now we have five asterisks on the screen once this loop is finished. Now the loop has ended, and now we're going to print a new line on the screen. So now we've entered a new line. It's going to look like this. So now we're starting our loop for the second time, the main loop. Once this is started, it runs this loop again five times. So now it's going to look like this. Once the loop is finished, it prints a new line. And now it's look, looking like this. And then it goes back to the top. So that's kind of how it works. So you can kind of visualize what is going on here. So the answer to our problem, if we want a cube, and we want to draw asterisks is going down, then one loop. But if we also want them to go down and across, then consider something like a nested loop. So that's how we can kind of tackle this problem using loops in C-sharp.